Hello, I'm Keith Wilson with the Schmidt Music Trombone Shop. One of the things we talk about in the brass world is material and what a difference material makes in how the instrument plays. Originally, when I started to think about this, the, the concept was a little bit foreign to me. So you're telling me that by changing the type of brass or how, that we're using in any one component, it can change how the instrument plays, how it sounds, how it plays, you know, how it responds for us. But you know, over time, over my years with the shop, and you know, talking with uh, you know top and world class manufacturers and artists about their experiences with this and how they go about designing building instruments, I've really come to understand that it does make a big difference. And in a lot of ways, I, I, I've come to understand why this is because it all all has to do with resonance and we'll talk about that a little bit more here in a little bit here but it is amazing what a difference materials can make even just a subtle difference and so I was recently doing um, some work with our Lake City large board tenor trombone actually trying some different material options and I thought boy this would be a great thing to, to share a little bit here so specifically um, I've been looking at some different material combinations for our hand slide the original setup on our hand slide um, uh, was yellow brass outer tubes nickel silver crook however um, as we're going through and continually trying to tweak our design I said well what if we try some different options so I had our, our maker build actually three different options for us um, we have our traditional uh, yellow brass with nickel silver um, we have an all yellow brass so all yellow brass outer tubes and a yellow brass crook on the bottom and nickel silver outer tubes with a yellow brass crook very very interesting your combination. Of course, these are all combinations for the most part that we've seen in different designs. And so I said, well, let's try these different combinations and find out is there a best match with our bell section that kind of encapsulates everything that we were looking for here. So I was going through doing some testing, but I said, oh, maybe I want to share it with all of you as well here. So I'm going to compare these three hand slides back to back, and then we're going to talk about afterwards. Again, I'm going to be playing all of this on our Lake City uh, tenor trombone bell section and a Bach 5G mouthpiece. Thank <laughs> you. 
hopefully it'll come through in the recording for you, but from a player standpoint, and I've gotten feedback from other, our, our other folks, Alex Heck, my trombone colleague, uh, Anthony Brown, who's in our trumpet shop, I've talked with them as well about this, and it really is amazing what a difference these materials have with the, the response, the playability of it, and not just a little bit, there are some, some very drastic changes for me. So the first slide I hand started off with was uh, this one. So nickel silver outer tubes, yellow brass crook. So just as a refresher here, as we're talking through this, um, nickel silver is a form of brass. Um, it has a, a percentage of tin of uh, tin nickel. They usually say about 10% added to it, which makes it significantly harder, denser than uh, yellow brass. And so we use nickel silver in a number of different ways. Um, we see nickel silver very commonly used in the bracing of the instrument, on the ferrules, on the cork barrels, etc. You know, a lot of you know very important support places because it is hard and it because it is significantly harder than brass, it tends to be, we can make it thinner. Um, we can make it a little bit lighter weight while still giving a lot of protection with it here. But because of the you know, the, the hardness of the material, um, the way it translates the vibration through the instrument really can change how it plays as well. And that is something that I've really started to encapsulate, trying to boil down, how do I think about why an instrument plays the way it does? When we make changes, why does it change how the instrument plays? And what I've really figured out is that, for me, I think it comes down to either airflow or resonance. What's happening to the air going through the instrument to support that waveform, that creation of the sound wave and how is the instrument itself playing a role in resonating and channeling that waveform, that vibration through the instrument. And it's amazing when we think about it like that, we start to understand a little bit more like why all these little changes make a difference in what's happening to the overall sound. We, you know, the, the timbre, the, the different overtone structures, the different frequencies that we have in there and why the instrument response changes. So for me, the nickel silver with yellow brass crook was interesting. It, the sound was a little, I don't want to say dead, but it was a little plain to me. I did like, I felt like it had some, some quickness to the initiation, but at the same time, I really felt like I had a little bit more difficult time getting the, uh, especially the sound to center properly, to really, really lock in. And boy, especially in the upper register, lower register, getting down to the pedal register and um, going up to, um, to, for example, B flat, eighth partial and beyond, I really felt like I had to struggle quite a bit with this, um, the slide. Now in comparison, the all yellow brass here, yellow brass tubes, yellow brass crook here, there was, there's a, a warmth to the sound that's really appealing to me. Um, I feel like, you know, it has a nice centered response, although um, even there occasionally I can feel things floating a little bit with it. But I did like, I felt, I thought compared to this, I had significantly more width depth to the sound. Um, I, I, I liked the lower register. Again, I found that when I got up to the upper register above that B flat eighth partial, I really started to fight it um, on the bolero, those D flats, boy, I, I, had to, I had to press. I had to do things that I usually don't like to do to get that to happen. Now, the third one I played was our, the, the setup that we've gone with for a while here. Yellow brass, outer tubes, nickel silver crook. And to me, this was the best balance of all of the different attributes. I felt like the, the timbre, I don't know if I just want to describe it as brighter than the all yellow brass setup. I think it was maybe a little bit more upper frequency heavy, but I think a lot of that was just the projection. I felt like it had more forward projection to it and a lot more life to the sound. This is one thing that um, when I had Alex and Anthony listening to it, they really noticed, they felt like with this, there was just significantly more color to the sound in that I was able to shift and control the color more if I wanted to have you know, a little bit more, a little bit more softness and depth to sound I could, or for example, on the Blair, if I wanted to give it a little bit more strident nature, it was able to do that. I was able to control that a little bit more. The upper register, I felt like was significantly more open than frankly, either of the other two slides. I had much better control up there. And I felt like I had a perfect balance of, 
slotting for me. Um, with the all yellow brass, I felt like occasionally it was just a little bit slow to move between the partials. With this kind of setup, if anything, it was almost a little clicky, where it felt like it wanted to move really quickly, but it really kind of slotted in almost quicker than I expected. With this setup, I felt like it was kind of the best combination of all of those attributes. Now, at the end of the day, can we blame the material on the crook of our hand slide or exactly how they built the bracing on our instrument? Can we blame it for all of the issues we might be having with our instrument? I would say no. I'm a big believer that what we accomplish with our instrument, with our music, is about head chops and heart. It, you know, what we have going up here are our passion, the work that we put into it. But it really is interesting for me, again, what a difference not just the instrument can make, but these little changes, and especially to give us some insight as to what the manufacturers are thinking about. You know, all of these great instrument makers that are out there, they're thinking about this. They have engineers, they have artists they're working with who are considering all of these ideas when and they're developing new instruments, tweaking what they already have. And I think this is just a, a very interesting insight into a little part of that process. Now, if you have any thoughts about what you heard or any thoughts about you know, experiences you've had with changing materials on your instrument, what difference that's made, leave them in the comments here. Share them with the community here. Um, if you like the video, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, please think about doing that. We'd love to have you as a part of our viewer community, and you'll make sure to hit that notification button so you find out when we have new videos coming out as well. And as always, you can check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you, as always, for watching. Thank <laughs> you.